Welcome Canada to this edition of Canada Games TV Today. I'm Philippe Baudry, standing here at the Otway Nordic Centre, where cross-country skiing races are being held right behind me. Speaking about races, let's kick it off today with the first ever Canada Games Today race. This is the Wood Innovation and Design Centre in Prince George, British Columbia. It is one of the tallest modern wood frame structures in the world and will serve as the starting point for the inaugural Canada Games TV Today race. Gentlemen, welcome to the Wood Innovation and Design Centre. In just a few minutes, you'll be taking part in a race around downtown Prince George and take part in challenges for a chance to win the Canada Games TV Today race. You have your cards? Are you ready? Go! first challenge of the race, contestants must find Lele Elder Edie Frederick and correctly recite a common Lele Tene phrase from start to finish. Which translates to, we welcome you to our traditional territory, thank you all. Got it. Hello. Hi. You would stop me if I'm doing it wrong. Twenty. Almost. Like, can you help give us some pointers? Uh, the U is up. Yeah. Thank you. Twenty Clayton Tene. The hunty with the hard out sna shalhaya. Thank you. In this challenge, our contestants will have to exchange four of these Via Sport pins for any other four pins from different people here at the plaza at the Canada Games. Excuse me, do you have any pins to trade? Uh, no, we're gathering. Oh, okay. I need to trade some. On. All right, sir. This, right. Thank you. This one's yours. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Ah, Jesus, I'm really struggling with this one. The games are almost over. The athletes will be leaving, but the venues left behind will forever nourish Prince George's sporting spirit. The Canada Winter Games have brought athletes competing at the highest stage to the humble city of Prince George. But when the games and the athletes leave, they're left with what the city calls a legacy. Uh, we have work that was done on Otway, which is our cross-country ski trail, uh, Purden, which is downhill, Tabor, which is downhill skiing. So there's a lot of uh, facilities that we've done a tremendous amount of work to as a result of the game. So that's a huge legacy for our sporting community. And it's not just the ski hills that have received much needed improvements. Kin 1 was completely redone with a convertible ice rink to accommodate both regular size ice and international competition, including short track speed skating. This, this facility helped. Like the, there's, you know, from, from a men's league, it, from a men's league perspective, it fit their needs. Like I said, we had lounge issues and, and meeting room issues and warm up areas and we, we didn't hit, hit them all, but we got a lot of it. To say that it's, it's, a it's a benefit for all users, I mean, it'll be well used uh, 365. I mean, I think just as far as uh, just the multi-uses that can be held there. So it's arenas like this that wouldn't have been possible if the games didn't come to Prince George. It's part of their legacy here. And it's a chance for the next generation of young Prince George athletes to reach the next stage of competition. We played hockey on there before, and it was big ice. Yeah, we played PG rep. Oh yeah? Yeah. Is it nice having a big facility? Yeah. Right yeah, it is. I think it's uh, better than the old one because it has the concession and everything. So, and better dre bigger dressing rooms. I do go skating, but I don't think I'm going to get into speed skating. Okay. Well, I might. Bigger skating is fun because you, you get to practice and stuff skating. And while the podium is a little far away for these young athletes, the Canada Winter Games legacy gives them hope. Daniel Stevens for Canada Games TV Today.
BC is known for its forests, but did you know that just outside of Prince George lies a temperate rainforest that's farther inland than any of its kind? Let's go check it out. The ancient forest. It's a place that feels like it belongs in a fairy tale. But there are those that think the reality is much more fantastic. And because the area is, um, is influenced by maritime as well as continental influences, you're getting new species of organisms that are developing, evolving. It's because of this biodiversity that the Ramblers have made it their goal to turn this hidden gem into a UNESCO World Heritage Site, an effort to help preserve the ancient rhythm of the forest. You know, essentially, it's um, a unique ecosystem and, uh, and it, it cries to be, de to be saved. It needs, cries to be protected. It needs to be safe for generations to come. It's this passion for preservation that has inspired volunteer groups like the Ramblers to conserve this natural treasure for the people of the North and the rest of the world. With over 6,000 hours already worked to build this beautiful boardwalk here, the Caledonia Ramblers hope that this fairy tale comes true. Jared Featherstone in the ancient forest for Canada Games TV today. One of the unique aspects of these games is the inclusion of the Special Olympics. These athletes overcome challenges every day and their story is really inspiring for all of us. This is Julia Romaldi. She's about to step on the ice for the most important skate of her life. Please welcome the next competitor, representing Ontario, Julia Romaldi. I'm having a great time at Prince George. Everything is amazing and so is the mission staff and the coaches. I'm really excited to do my program for everybody. Calm and collected, she hits the ice and watching are two of her biggest fans. skate on the biggest stage. We've engaged athletes with a disability and an intellectual disability for quite a number of years now, okay, and it's a special, that, that's what the Canada Games is about. I tell you, I've spoken to parents of kids with an intellectual disability and um, it is quite the experience for those kids, okay, and it really does make a difference in how those kids feel and, and, and what they look to achieve. The mission staff and Team Ontario worked very hard to make sure that the kids were going to be included and uh, they did an excellent job. It's an honor to be part of Team Ontario and I'm having so much fun to Prince George. Glad I did the experience of uh, skating in front of the, all these fans. The Madagahi for Canada Games TV Today. The Canada Games here in Prince George are soon coming to an end. And after the break, we'll have a little glimpse at the closing ceremony's preparation. You stay tuned. There is an ancient rhythm that flows through all things, through rocky spires and ocean swell. The endless stillness of green. And in the restless depths of human hearts, the voice of the wild within.
UNBC is set to host the closing ceremony on Sunday and crews are now out in full effect readying the campus for its big night. I think this is the biggest secret in Prince George what's going to be transpiring here. I think they're doing that on purpose uh, which is fine by me. I've seen a lot of neat things happen here over the years and I'm really expecting Sunday will be a real highlight for a lot of people here. What's going to be really great about this ceremony is that we're going to embrace the natural architecture of the university here. We want to show the rest of Canada that Prince George has got history, but it's also got a great modern approach to the young people here. And, and so we're going to use the staircases and the, all the natural spaces of this outdoor plaza here at the university. You know, one of the things that we, we looked at in, in all the previous Canada Winter Games was that they were always either in a uh, hockey arena or in, in an indoor facility. You know, I really wanted to go outdoors and, I, and we couldn't do that at the start with the opening ceremonies because it has to be programmed, it needs to fit in. So for the closing we went outdoors, we, we made this decision literally over three years ago. We were a little bit worried about what the weather would be but the forecast is great and I am really looking forward to having an outdoor closing ceremonies. While everyone involved in the closing ceremony is keeping tight-lipped about the details, the producer of Sunday's festivities said to expect a special entrance from the flame. Corey Career for Canada Games TV today. Canada Games are a starting point for many great athletes. Think of Sidney Crosby, who participated in the 2003 Canada Games. And I believe we have found the next NHL All-Star player right here in Prince George. At just 15 years old, Joseph Valeno is already creating a buzz around the hockey community. Valeno is representing Team Quebec at the Canada Games as one of the youngest players in men's hockey. Playing in a tournament mostly comprised of players a year older, Valeno says that hasn't stopped him from playing his game. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to play against older guys, but for me, I'm, I guess I'm just keeping up uh, with the other guys and uh, I'm not really focused about that. I'm just thinking of that, you know, they're all my age and I'm just playing my best hockey there. Coach Marco Petronero says Valeno's elite offensive skills and passion for the game made him an easy choice for Team Quebec. Oh, he's a great player. You know, he's got good speed, good hockey sense. You know, he's uh, he loves the game. You can see he's passionate, and uh, he's a great person too. So it's fun to have him on the team. You know, obviously he's younger than the rest of them, but he fits in very well. You know, and like I said, lots of passion, fire in the eyes. He wants to play hockey. Valeno is currently being considered for exceptional status in the upcoming Quebec Major Junior Hockey League draft. If he were to do so, he would be the first player in QMJHL history to accomplish the feat something even Sidney Crosby couldn't do himself. Despite the looming decision, the Kirkland Quebec native says his goal is simply to finish the season strong. Well, uh, you know, I'm not really focused on, uh, on that right now. I'm just kind of taking it step by step. And you know, right now I'm, I'm focused about this tournament and about winning gold with the team. And then after playoffs, you know, whatever happens, happens. Whether he's drafted this year or next, Leno is clearly one player to watch out for. Justin Kwan for Canada Games TV today. I'm standing here outside the athletes' village where media is not usually allowed. But for today, we get a one-time look at where the athletes go to relax. Let's go take a look. Nutrition is one of many things that help an athlete perform at an elite level. Here at the cafeteria, roughly 5,000 meals are served every day. The abundance of food is obviously something the athletes love. The food's been so good and there's been a lot of it, which is good because I eat a lot. So. <laughs> Yeah. Now with sport comes injuries. The polyclinic in the village has been busy tending to these athletes. We see roughly um, roughly 50 to 70 uh, injuries a day for therapy and some of those are acute and many of them are actually older injuries that have maybe flared up a little bit with their activity. These athletes are obviously very busy, but that doesn't stop them from having a little downtime in the athletes' lounge. Um, this is their sanctuary. It's one of the only places that is 100% secure for participants to come in and, and to just kind of get away, you know, from their whether it's their parents or just people trying to trade pins with them or, or whatever. Um, they can come here and kind of just relax and, and get away. And some people are doing homework, you know, all kinds of stuff. So here inside the athletes lounge where the players come after their events and after a hard day's work they can do anything from playing video games to some yoga or just come here and lounge. Austin Good for Canada Games TV today.
We are here up at beautiful UNBC where crews are behind us getting ready for the closing ceremony coming up this Sunday. That's right, and it's going to be the first time that the closing ceremony will be held outdoors in Canada Games history. But before the closing ceremony happens, we'll be airing our last episode of Canada Games TV today for 2015. We're going to have a recap of our favorite moments over the past two weeks that we were able to capture here in Prince George. But the games aren't quite over yet. That's right, we still have a couple gold medal finals coming up this weekend, including badminton, table tennis, and judo, to name a few. And then on Sunday, we have the much-anticipated men's hockey gold medal final, which will definitely be an exciting end to the games. Well, that's it for us here in Prince George, because as the games wrap up, so does our production. Coming up next, we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look into Canada Games TV today and how the show came together. A defining moment for me was when I finished my first internship and got lots of really great feedback from industry professionals. I would never imagine I'd be walking into the floors of TSN and thinking, I'm not a student anymore, I'm here to work. I will be starting a job with an investigative news program in Toronto and I'm really excited to see that grow into what will become hopefully my dream job. BCIT broadcast and online journalism, putting you to work. It starts with a sense of purpose, a drive to be more, and not letting stereotypes define you. Following a family legacy of hard work, determination, and passion for mechanics, Stephanie Keenan's carving her own path. Stephanie, a story of drive. Your story is our story. See hers, share yours. FanshawC.ca slash your story. Looks like Glad a beautiful hear. morning. It does. You might even get a little sunshine today. You well, I think we're getting luck. Just cross your fingers. <laughs> you guys here for another week? We are gotcha. indeed. Yeah. Leaving on the first. Leaving on the first, eh? Yeah. Then what's our good city going to do while you're gone? I don't know what they're going to do without us, but <laughs> I know we're going to be sleeping for the next three days after that. <laughs> so Jared's yeah. going to come in around 10 Saturday. Shannon will come in later. I'll probably come in later than that. So you can edit in the afternoon. We'll send that schedule out tonight. And then there are some shoots going out for Saturday afternoon. It takes a lot of people. I don't think people realize how much behind the scenes stuff goes into this. We work to do schedules, to go out on segment shoots, to make sure that everyone has gear, make sure everyone is not having any problems. You're kind of putting out, putting out fires and you know, dealing with crisis that comes along, but as a student, you don't get chances like this where you get to design your own show. We have full creative license and people have been using that and they've been telling stories that maybe a major news station wouldn't tell or that, you know, it's not, it's not just about the sports, but these, these athletes that have really important stories that we get to be the ones to get to dive in and, you know, tell people what's going on and, you know, show Prince George and it's been amazing. I mean, from the it has been a surreal experience. I mean, just the energy in the city right now with all of Canada here and the top athletes in Canada, it's been amazing to cover these stories, whether it be doing the polar bear swim dive down or an emotional story. You're seeing all these inspirational stories and you see why sports brings our country together. Going to the plaza every day to watch the show that we have put together has been, it's been awesome. I mean, the, the work that my peers have done has been amazing, the stories that they've been getting, I'm jealous. I've learned a lot about just shooting and editing in general, and then also uh, the whole experience has been great in uh, Prince George, just getting to see the whole city and all it has to offer. Well, it's been a really great experience for me. I've had the chance to uh, use the camera a lot and actually get comfortable with it. So I'm able to go out on shoots and um, actually start to be creative. That's probably been the most fun part for me. And um, the other great thing about the experience is that I think we've really seen ourselves come together as a team and learn to work together. And um, when we're all striving for the same goal, everyone's able to help each other out and, and focus on achieving the same thing. This is the best group of students that could ever be here. I'm Every time I watch that show, I'm so proud that I get to be part of this show and that everyone works so hard and, you know, I'm just, I'm so proud. Every time I watch that show, I'm so proud. 
Now let's go back to our Canada Games TV Today's race to see who's leading between Imad and Robin. <laughs> hey! I believe, I believe, I believe these teams. You're watching the Canada Games TV Today race. When we left off, contestants Robin and Imad were neck and neck in the pin trading challenge. Awesome. Thank you so much. Did you want to trade? Okay, thanks so much. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, gladly. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. I just need one more. I'm going to go find one. Thanks for your help. There you go. Thank you very much. That is yours. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. We got them. We got four. One, two, three, four. Four. On to your next challenge. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Second floor of the art gallery. For their final challenge, contestants must correctly identify the flag of every Canadian province and territory in order to receive their next clue. How you doing, Ahmad? You gotta pick up, you gotta pick up. That's four. All right, you're on to your next challenge. Thank you very Thank much. You. Proceed to the art galley for your final challenge. Got a little bit of time, I think, because Ahmad's like a whole clue behind. Brunswick. Thank you. This is the Canada Games Cauldron in Flame, which is lit for the duration of the games. It will be the finish line for the Canada Games TV Today race. Oh, there he is. Oh, pick it up, man. Pick it up. Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, where are you? This is done? All done. Three challenges, two contestants, and one winner of the Canada Games TV Today race. How do you feel, Robin? Oh my gosh, let me catch my breath. Uh, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Good, Good job, race. Man. Good job, man. Good job. Uh, let me get a hug with the moose here. Let oh, me get yeah. a hug. Oh, oh, I did it for this. This is the reward. This is the reward right here. Well, that's all from uh, Prince George in the first edition of the Canada Games TV Today race. We'll see you next time. Interact with us online through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and be sure to hashtag all your Canada Games posts with hashtag CGTV Today. Canada Games TV Today airs weekdays at 5 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. at canadagamestv.ca. So that's it for our show today. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Philippe Baudry for Canada Games TV Today. See you next time, Canada. Sport Productions is really a way for us to spread out the reach of amateur sport within BC and the world. We have an opportunity to live stream, we can cover events, all ages and stages of life. So for the first time, we can bring amateur sport 
to our community and to our province and to our country. Via Sport is the organization tasked with making sure all the different moving parts in the sport system are aligned so as to deliver the best possible sport and fitness product for every citizen in every corner of the province. Via Sport is about growing sport and physical activity throughout the province of British Columbia. At the end of the day, we want more people playing more sport for a longer time in more places.